Hurricane Lee blew its top last night. We watched this hurricane go from a modest Category 2 all the way up to a Category 5 within the span of 12 hours. Fortunately, it looks like on satellite, Lee has finally found its way into an eye wall replacement cycle and a little bit of increased wind shear that's preventing it from maintaining this Category 5 intensity. It is anticipated it should maintain major hurricane status as it continues to track off to the west-northwest. Today on Weather Center Nazario, we're going to try not to fixate too heavily on Hurricane Lee, but talk about the tropics as a whole because it looks like despite the future development that we're looking forward to as we go through the rest of September, it does seem like the synoptic pattern is setting up to prevent any kind of catastrophic landfall from occurring at least over the next couple of weeks. Join me guys as we take a look at the big picture weather pattern across the North Atlantic and over the United States over the next couple days. Fasten your seatbelts, let's get in here. Alrighty, viewers, let's go ahead and get started. We're looking at National Hurricane Center's homepage. There are currently two active storms out in the Atlantic. However, everyone is kind of fixated on Hurricane Lee after the tremendous show he put on for us last night. Tropical Storm Margo is doing her very best out in the East Atlantic to hold on to that Tropical Storm title as she really gets the living daylights beaten out of her by some really good upper-level wind shear out of the southwestern quadrant of the circulation. We're taking a look at the 11 a.m. advisory for Hurricane Lee. It did manage to fill a little bit from what it deepened down into yesterday evening. We were in the mid 920 millibars and now we're back up to about 942 at least according to the 11 a.m advisory this brings it to as high end of a category 4 major hurricane as we could possibly get with winds in the center of 155 miles per hour gusts in excess of 180 easily as it undergoes its eye wall replacement cycle and gets out of this area of upper level wind shear we could see this re-intensify and potentially cross that category 5 threshold once more as it continues off to the west northwest we haven't seen much in the way of deviations with the hurricane center track albeit it is starting to finally show a little bit of a wobble to the north as we get into early morning wednesday and through the day on wednesday however you want to pay close attention to just how wide this cone is and we'll get into that here in a minute as to why nhc has their cone expanded so much here's the latest information on tropical storm margo we got to do her a favor and keep her in our thoughts and prayers because again she is struggling to hold on to that tropical storm intensity with the amounts of wind shear she's getting hit with out of the southwest winds have been holding steady at 40 miles per hour we're moving at the west northwest at 17 miles per hour and it is likely to cross into more favorable conditions once we can get through the day of saturday and into sunday we'll get out of that pocket of strong 40 50 knot wind shear coming out of the southwest and it'll finally be entrenched underneath a warm subtropical ridge where she can finally wrap up in of itself and start to deepen into probably a category one all right i apologize for the organized mess or the organized chaos that's brought on by this oceanic chart however what we really want to focus on is going to be this 1026 high pressure situated over the the majority of the North Atlantic and the multitude of frontal systems making their way towards the eastern coastline. We have a 1013 mature low over the central Canadian provinces moving off to the southeast and we have two frontal systems that are unfortunately undergoing frontalysis so really won't play much of a factor in the track of Hurricane Lee as it gets closer and closer to making that turn to the north. However upstream this next system as it re-intensifies supported by our 1023 high over western Canada is what's likely to erode the western extent of our high pressure in the Atlantic and open up that channel for it to safely transition to the north. As far to the west or east this system tracks and when it makes that turn is going to be critical in terms of if we see an impact along the northeast coastline maybe into parts of Maine, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick and the eastern Canadian provinces up there. So regardless of what it continues to do in the near distant future we still have about seven to ten days to observe Lee and see exactly what it wants to do when it takes that fateful turn to the north and who it could potentially impact when it does so. We're going to quickly look at our North Atlantic shear chart. You can see that the northern quadrant of Lee has found its way underneath 30 to 35 knot pocket of wind shear that's helping to kind of elongate the system off to the northeast. Coupled that with the ERC that it's currently undergoing and we are going to continue to see a dissipation trend at least for the rest of the day today. Forward from here I do believe it'll be in a much more favorable environment. You can even see it here indicated by these green barbs kind of hanging out together just off to its west. That's the general trajectory we forecast it'll continue to move so once it gets into that area of lower wind shear we will probably see the eye take shape once more and we could see it past that cat 
Category 5 threshold because it's only 3 mile per hour below what we classify as a Category 5. These are the latest multi-model ensembles, the super ensembles for Hurricane Lee, and you can see that we have a good amount of confidence that we're going to see that sudden shift to the north. The big concern here is going to be the timing and the point in time in which it takes that turn. Some of the models want to take it further off to the west where it'll play a much greater role in what the Bahamas see out of this storm. It could even turn off to the north a little further to the east. I know that sounds like a conundrum, but if it does make that turn to the north further east of where we're pathing it right now, Bermuda is likely going to have to do battle with a borderline Cat 3 storm as it works its way to the north, entering more unfavorable environments for it to maintain its major hurricane status. But it goes without saying, Bermuda is going to have a hefty storm on their hands if it does turn a little earlier than we're anticipating. Over the last 12 and 24 hours, we've seen a bit more of a concentration in these ensembles. You can see at 0Z early this morning, we have a much wider margin of error with these ensembles and where it would turn to the north, some really tracking it off to the west, getting a little uncomfortably close to the Florida Peninsula, and others taking it way out into the Atlantic much sooner than we were predicting. 12Z was a very similar story. We had some outlier models wanting to continue this system off to the west with some transitioning even further east of the Bermuda Island. As of 12Z today, you can see we have a fair bit of agreement from all model platforms, the Euro, GFS, UK, and CMC. Well, I should say the UK hasn't populated in yet, but once we do, Lord willing, we'll see a greater concentration that will turn to the north. The timing and that margin of error from between here and here is still going to be that main concern. And we're looking at a new chart here. This is on pivotalweather.com. This is going to be our 6 to 10 day temperature probability outlook percentage. And in layman's terms, this is essentially like a temperature anomaly chart indicating where it'll get warmer and where it'll get cooler over the next 6 to 10 days. As that ridge out west begins to strengthen and ridge further into western Canada, you can see that a lot of the pack northwest Great Basin area is likely to see a warming trend over the next few days. And all this blue shading out here over the Appalachians and as you get closer to the mid-Atlantic states is in response to that trough deepening down from the Great Lakes supporting the frontal system that is eventually going to evacuate Hurricane Lee off to the north. I figured this is a great chart to look at because it really does a great job of highlighting in the most simplest of ways what exactly is going to help prevent the coastline from being hit by Lee. So just taking a look at this chart by itself and what the ensembles are predicting, we can probably rule out a landfall from the Cape Hatteras area and further down to the south. Now of course there's always that 5% chance that things change. However, to see that dramatic of a change this close into the near distant future, we're looking at maybe 5 to 7 days out now. I don't really foresee it happening unless something major occurs at the jet level or just below that at 500 millibars. So again, we could see some changes, some shifting back and forth, but I don't think we're going to see something so dramatic as for it to continue to go west or suddenly hike off to the east, which would be an even better scenario that plays out. All right, we're looking at Tropical Storm Margo's homepage on Tropical Tidbits. You can see in this static infrared overlay, the storm is really, really having a hard time. You, honestly, you can't really even identify a storm looking at the static image because most of the thunderstorm activity has been skewed off to the northeast thanks to that wind shear coming out of the west and southwest. We look like we're starting to get a little, I drew the arrow perfectly too, we're getting a little hint of thunderstorm activity popping off right where I would think the center would be, but even then, we're still in very unfavorable conditions to see Margo become anything more than just a very low-grade tropical storm with a central pressure of about 1,005 millibars. So again, she's clinging on to dear life to keep that tropical storm title about her. Going forward in time, the ensembles, if you look closely, this is going to be GFS here in this picture, and this is going to be your Canadian ensembles. You see even wider of a spread in terms of how far to the west or how far to the east this system can track. Luckily, we're out in the middle of the Atlantic, so no matter how far this thing wants to go wide left or right, it's really not going to influence the overall weather pattern for anyone in the vicinity because there's nobody out there. So we can kind of have fun seeing the inconsistencies in the models for this storm in particular because it doesn't play a vital role in anyone's weather conditions or could potentially cause an impact. We're looking at Tropical Storm Margo's intensity guidance and once again the mean average or the general trend is strengthening over the next few days. Once it gets three days into the future and we get out of that pocket a strong upper level shear, I do anticipate and the models are in a fair bit of agreement we will see a category one hurricane out of this storm. A few want to take it into the category two territory. I don't think we'll see that much strengthening out of this system especially as she traverses further and further north getting higher into the latitudinal range of the Atlantic. We'll get into those cooler waters so I think we could see a cat one hurricane out of this but I don't forecast that we'll see a cat two out of it and luckily this is going to stay far enough away from everybody to where if it does go cat two it's really no harm or foul. In fact power to her. All right we're once again going to shift into the forecasting realm for the back end of episode 24 of Weather Center and as you can see even at 72 hours we already have a fair bit of agreement that we could see a tropical depression take shape out of the wave that just exited the African coastline. But as you go further in time you can see it doesn't 
quite hold on to the probabilities we saw in that first panel, but it does seem like the euro is in a fair bit of agreement. We will see a depression come out of this storm, and then we begin to split the difference in terms of whether or not it wants to evacuate off to the north or continue into our lesser Antilles approaching the greater Antilles of Puerto Rico and Hispaniola Dominican Republic. We also have hints of another depression coming off of West Africa, which is what I'd mentioned in my video I think a day or two ago, that we're still going to continue to see that African wave freight train coming off the coast and moving into the MDR, and despite the shear that Margo's undergoing, that's to the north of where these storms are typically exiting the coastline, so they should stay in a favorable enough of environment to at least get a tropical disturbance, if not a depression, out of these storms over the next several days. As of the 12Z Euro ensembles, you can see a fair bit of agreement. We're looking out here over the eastern Atlantic. At about 120 hours out, some of our members want to organize a tropical depression and transition into a tropical storm, and then once we get beyond 200 hours, you can see that split difference in whether or not it's going to try to follow a reminiscent track of Hurricane Lee or push its way into the Caribbean. Right now, it looks like the models are favoring more of a northward track, keeping it away from our Caribbean Sea. So that's a good sign for the temporary future. And then if you get towards the very back end of the run, we're going to once again shift gears and look back over West Africa, Eastern Atlantic. I'll go ahead and highlight it in blue. We have yet another system that could push off and quickly organize in our MDR and push off to the west. On the GFS ensembles, there's even more agreement that we could see the tropical depression take shape over the next few days and work its way off to the west. And the GFS is also struggling a bit with that discontinuity and whether or not it'll follow a track similar to Lee's or continue a little bit further off to the west, potentially impacting our Caribbean islands and the Bahamas more so than what Lee is currently doing, which is something we're going to have to pay attention to. Towards the back end, if you look out over the eastern Atlantic again, the GFS is also in unison with the euro and picking up on another disturbance. I know at this point it's getting a little crowded out there, so it's hard to pick up on, but trust me when I say you can see some additional ensemble members highlighting another wave that could organize into a depression as we get far out into the future, 300 hours plus. So there's plenty of time to get ahead of that and watch what comes off Africa. Last but not least, I wanted to show you the North Atlantic overall mean sea level pressure change or the trends in terms of what's likely to take shape as we get our next system out there, Nigel and potentially Ophelia. I do believe, at least for now, based on the synoptic pattern, and we should be in a safe zone in terms of avoiding a potential landfall. As you go through time and you begin to see cyclogenesis occur in the MDR, there goes Nigel beginning to show itself as Lieb quickly enters the northeast states and ejects out into the North Atlantic. Here is Margo finally having reached hurricane strength, working its way behind Lee. You can see that as we get another baroclinic system off the coast of the United States, it does open up a very similar channel to what we're seeing with Hurricane Lee right now and evacuate that storm to the north as tropical storm Ophelia takes shape just to the north of the Cabo Verde Islands, kind of in the same source region as Margo. So we could almost see a direct mirror image of what we see in the Atlantic right now. Pending, we see more synoptic scale baroclinic features come off of the east coast and erode our central Atlantic high, allowing these storms to drift to the north. But folks, we're keeping it short and sweet today. Let's go ahead and get into the outro because that pretty much wraps up episode 24. We've officially reached the end of the road for episode 24 of Weather Center Nazario. Hurricane Lee remains a very, very potent tropical system out in the central Atlantic, approaching his ever fateful turn to the north where he could impact the northeastern states as well as eastern Canada. Over the next five to seven days, we're going to be watching closely to see when this turn takes place and if it wobbles to the west or even further to the east and could put the island of Bermuda under the gun for some fairly significant weather. It goes without saying, ladies and gentlemen, if you are watching this episode and if you've been keeping up with Hurricane Lee over the last 24, 36 hours, we are witnessing meteorological history taking place. Regardless Regardless if this storm hits land, regardless if we see any record-breaking damage, we are still witnessing the evolution of a catastrophic Category 5 storm, and it doesn't typically do that in our tropical basin anywhere you look over the globe. We are still anticipating the tropics are going to act up as we get towards the back end of September, but for now, let's take advantage of the fact that these storms are looking to stay away from any major landfalls as we go over the next 7 to 14 days. Thank you all so much for tuning in today, and I will see you tomorrow as we kick off the weekend on a high note with episode 25 of Weather Center. But until then, this is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.